Hey, Brennan, you sure are taking this COVID stuff seriously, man. Nah, dude, uh, the guy said that James sent a 1911 for me to review. I just, you know, I don't, don't want to get any, like, fud or boomer juice on me, so... Oh, Jesus, it's true. Oh, my God. Hey guys, Brandon with Noltac for TFB TV. So I'm a Glock guy in 95% of cases, though I am becoming a SIG 365XL guy. That said, I do have some specific experience with 1911-style single-action only guns. The majority of that is from a competition perspective as a member of the United States Marine Corps Reserve Rifle and Pistol Team back in the day. On top of that, the very first handgun I ever purchased for myself as an adult outside of my first duty gun was actually a Springfield Armory 1911 match I bought from a guy off the internet in a parking lot for 500 bucks. I like the guns and appreciate and respect their history, lineage, and effectiveness within the appropriate context. Now, I do not feel the 1911 is an appropriate concealed carry firearm above other available options for anyone. It's not better suited for that task above any other reasonable option by any metric. And I feel as an instructor and shooter, it is a poor choice for probably 98% of people, even if they were willing to accept the disadvantages such a choice carries. There is no articulable advantage that compensates for the numerous disadvantages of that decision. For the slow kids, I'm not saying a 1911 won't work for EDC or concealed carry. I'm saying it's not the best decision. That same logic holds true for choosing 45 over 9 mil. Let me give you a minute to let your blood pressure go down and wipe the code red Mountain Dew you spit on your pooter screen off. At the same time, there is just something about a full metal 1911 that just makes you feel like you're holding an actual piece of America. In the same way that there is no intelligent way to articulate that the choice to drive a monster truck to work that outweighs the disadvantages of that choice is better than a typical daily driver. There's no denying the sheer cool factor and purely aesthetic aspect of doing so. To do something I, I never thought I would actually do in real life, to quote nothing fancy, I'm talking about that second kind of cool. Sometimes we do things just because we like to, even if they may not be the best decision. I'm talking to you, Vapors. In fact, when I agreed to do the review, I requested a 9mm version of the gun, and I got the 45 shipped instead. To be honest, I wasn't real psyched about doing the review at all, and did it mainly to keep James from beating me and calling me names. They sent me their brimstone model in 45 in the concealed carry officer size. Now, a couple of things were different about the way I did this review. This is a very high-end, custom-made 1911. Comparing it to a rack gun would be like comparing a Bugatti to a Buick. The expectations and requirements are different and they need to be taken into account. First, I had the opportunity to have a phone conference with the CEO of Cabot Arms, Rob Bedenkin, and the founder and master gunsmith of Alchemy Custom Weaponry, Rob Sholin. I was able to pick their brain and more importantly, their heart about the intent of the line and what they were trying to accomplish. They were not happy with what they perceived as a lot of other custom and semi-custom shops trying to turn a 1911 into some gaming version of a super Glock. Basically, they're more traditionalist. Another thing that typically is at odds with my personal taste. I'm more a new gun guy versus an old gun guy. I get more excited about new technology than older or surplus designs. Same thing with cars. I like newer cars over older cars. I summed up their goal in my own words like this, and on the phone they both laughed and said, yep, that's it. They wanted to make heirloom quality pieces that can get the job done well with style and 100% reliability. A classic American workhorse that can win a pageant or a war, whatever the day calls for. You need to keep in mind that this is a boutique gun handcrafted in very small quantities with only two gunsmiths making all the guns with a five to six month lead time typically and as such carries an MSRP of 2,600 to three grand depending on what you pick. Which, after my experience with it, and zero interest in owning another 1911 for any practical purpose, I would absolutely pay that for this gun due to my experience with this performance. I shot a total of 1,023 documented rounds of various brands and weights of ammo through several magazine brands over a period of six months, a little bit over six months. Besides range practice, I took it through the first cohort of the Tom Givens Master Instructor Course, where I was one of the two youngest shooters by a fair bit, 
Ironically, the only one with a 1911 pattern gun in the course, and to my knowledge, the only one whose gun did not experience a single malfunction except for maybe John Correa's HK. In fact, it was kind of comical considering the peers there, the dynamics of that statement. While there, the first rounds I fired out of the gun at that course was on a bullseye drill where I almost cleaned the drill, but still scored top shooter and got a coin. As an aside, this gun matched with the ASIM ammo is basically cheating. It's amazing how accurate that combo is. The ammo used included 272 rounds of the ASIM 185 grain hollow point, 359 rounds of Atlanta Arms 230 grain ball, 252 rounds of Ventura 230 grain ball, 50 rounds of JGA 185 grain hollow points, 20 rounds of Hornady 185 grain zombie max hollow point, 20 rounds of Black Hills 200 grain semi wad cutters, and 50 rounds of Gecko 230 grain ball. All the ammo shot reliably, no malfunctions, good accuracy across brands, and reliable feeding. Special thanks, of course, to Venture Munitions, a sponsor of TFB TV, for supplying much of the ammo used, as well as their continued support. If you didn't know, they also Cerakote and make cool looking guns. My B-roll was poor, but while at the outdoor range, I made consistent hits at 50 yards and landed six out of seven shots taken at steel at 100 yards the very first time I took the gun out. The gun's accurate, period. I also used several brands and sizes of mags to assess feeding reliability, and those consisted of the six mags they sent me, uh, one seven round GI mag, three Ruger eight round mags, and one eight round Wilson combat mag. No issues. I dropped them on the deck most times, no loose rounds popped out, everything went great. There were a handful of times the slide did not lock back on the last round, but it was inconsistent among the label mags, and I'm 100% sure it was the same thing as on almost all guns I shoot, and it was due to my excessively high grip. Also, and I typically don't do this, and it kind of makes my Agent Orange act up when review is due, but I intentionally did not clean or lube the gun before firing it. My intent with that was knowing the gun design is typically less tolerable of fouling and expecting that to be exasperated by the tighter tolerances expected from a custom gun. I was curious to see when it would start to have issues. Well, I was disappointed. I was disappointed in that it actually never did. Uh, Finally, I broke down and just added a few drops of lube after 817 rounds, even though it never malfunctioned because somehow I had convinced myself it was getting sluggish. Five. I still haven't cleaned it and don't intend to. The stocks are grippy and like they hurt, okay? They're aggressive. But then again, I'm used to polymer frame guns and I have very soft, womanly hands, kept supple by copious amounts of moisturizer and a lack of hard work due to hours spent arguing with people online instead of building things. That said, I truly do believe these grip panels aid in accuracy, especially with multiple shots under speed. At no time did I feel I was losing my grip, even with the increased recall of 45 while shooting under speed. The trigger, whew, well, I don't consider myself a trigger snob, at least not in the same way James is a beer snob, but I know a good trigger and a bad trigger when I shoot it. These are excellent triggers. Now, even a decent 1911 style trigger will generally be noticeably better than even a high-end striker fire trigger. But this one is really nice. So nice, it kind of scared me. <laughs> it's light, just shy of three pounds, with a super crisp and very light, like Chinese drywall light wall before it breaks. In the beginning, a couple of times, I double tap when I'm at the single tap getting used to the trigger. Because of that, my speed from the draw concealed to first shot was noticeably sh slower because I was extremely cautious of the trigger and my lack of current familiarity and consistency with manipulating a manual safety on the draw. I took my time out of safety for my junk. That said, the gun balances excellently and is a true shooter. I used an appendix G-code incog that was an old prototype I had for 1911 when we were designing it. I also had a G-code outside the waistband paddle holster I used a few times. That said, the gun deserves to be coupled with a very nice high-end leather holster. Now, I don't want to be the only instructor who claims that 1911 will complete a course, but if I had to take a 1911 to another multiple day course, this would be the one I would take. But I would need to buy about 40 more magazines because having eight to nine rounds in a gun just makes me feel inadequate. I kind of want to try that though, just to see if I can break the curse that so many of my peers have experienced. In all, the gun is excellent. Well worth the price if you find value in nicer heirloom quality things. 
This is definitely a barbecue type gun to show off, but one that if while showing off three to eight ninjas attack the barbecue, you can accurately smoke them from considerable distance with extreme prejudice. If I was going to intentionally purchase a 1911, especially as a gift for someone that I respected, who I knew would see the value in the craftsmanship of such a piece, right now this would be the one. In fact, I'm probably gonna see about purchasing this one just because I want a nice 1911 so I can feel special too when I you know, visit old folks' homes, eat at Piccadilly Cafeteria, go to gun stores, or you know, wanna surprise the hell out of my peers while I show up at training events and stuff. I also wanna send a shout out to our sponsors, Top Gun Supply, for their support. They're basically like the tactical Walmart, or you know, if you bougie, Target, for tactical whatnots and you know, thingamabobs. The Alchemy Brimstone is a gentleman's gun, but a gentleman who sometimes might have to not be a gentleman to bad people and wants to do it well and with a certain panache. As always, be vigilant, be prepared, y'all stay safe. <laughs>